So today we're talking about Closure by Dennis Cooper, the first in the George Miles um, cycle, um, which is a collection of five novels that he did throughout his life. And pretty much this book is about, it's another transgressive book. It's about a kid who is gay in high school and focuses on his interaction between other students and people in the art scene as well. So that's kind of reads like it's in college, but I believe it's in high school because he's still living with his parents and just various stuff like that. Um, this was a novel, I wasn't the biggest fan of this novel necessarily, and that's not because it's not well written, that's not because it's transgressive or anything, but the characters it focuses on, I just have a difficult time attaching to personally, it's just pure personal preference. It's just characters like kind of the outsiders, a little bit of the weirdos, but still like the social party types in high school, if that makes sense to you, or they're not the prep boys, but it's like, oh yeah, like, this guy gets around, does a lot of party, having a lot of sex, but he's kind of an odd person um, and just doesn't really know the direction they want to go in life and just kind of goes to the vices. And I just had trouble um, connecting to that personally, but at the same time, I do, do enjoy this book and appreciate it from the aspect of it's a very honest look at um, gay culture in high school and growing up and the relations that you form and also just unhealthy sex growing up as well. So from that perspective, I think it's really great. Um, for example, so George Miles, a lot of the book's perspective, even though he's the main character and it's serious about him, it's taken, a lot of it is taken from the perspective of other characters and how they view George and relationships that he gets in with, which is a great thing because each person's individual relationship with, with George that's going to be significant. How people, your relationship with different people, romantic relationships, is really going to tell a lot about you and all the different perspectives and how they view you as well. And you do get the first person, well, not first person, but like you do get the George segment as well, where it does talk about his life and the things he went through. But it's, it was really smart to see that perspective through others. And not just like some weird tangential thing, but people who are having those very intimate relationships with George and you just kind of learn he's a he's a cute guy he's kind of quiet and maybe he doesn't protect himself the most he's definitely a bottom <laughs> throughout the novel but he's just kind of somebody who is a bit lost and emotional and that's mainly because his family life is pretty rough he has a dad who's um I don't even want to say he's strict necessarily probably wouldn't accept the fact that George is gay because George does actively hide it from himself but like maybe his dad wasn't there for him in the way he needed George to be but at the same time he's not like a strict military type s father he loves George you know at one point in the novel like George like, comes up to him and you can see George is destroyed his father just holds him and just like you know tries to comfort him in that moment but at the same time he's so exasperated with him like dude you're doing all this stuff Here's a list of people you all you are having sex with, all the stuff you're doing, like insane sex acts. Just go to your mother for a little bit. And you think he's gonna live with his mother, but maybe this leads to George um, seeking validation in bad people. His mother's in the hospital. So it's like he he's he's a young man dealing with the grief that his mother's terminally ill and just dying. And in the novel she does die and just just sends him over the edge even more so. So his dad's not there in the specific way George might need him to be there. And maybe George is a bit of a shit himself, or sometimes you see those people, it's like, you have a good family life, why do you, why do you have so many problems, man? Why do, you, why do you so like this? And so the validation he seeks from others, they often view George as an object. Or they, like, this one character who literally wants to George to act like a dead body, and he tries to kill George in the novel. He slices up his ass. Um, and, but George just went to him because he's like, dude, I just need somebody. I just need somebody there for me. He goes to an older man who has violent tendencies and like, you know, an older man dealing with underage kids, like, what is this guy doing? Why does George go with him? And, but then he also entertains other older man's advantage. He pushes some away, but it, it is funny. It's kind of like how you hear about women, how they get hit on a lot when they're teenagers by men who obviously shouldn't be hitting on them. It's the same thing with George, the older man. He will, he will pull by next to him, try to hit on him, try to get him in his car and stuff like that. And George doesn't entertain it, but then sometimes he does entertain it. 
he has people who um, will insult him socially as well. So he just going around not finding the best people in life for him. And that's really contrasted by his older male partner, Felipe, which it gets a little out there, but he comes to America because he really had the desire to kill somebody. He wanted that erotic experience. And he has an opportunity where he sees a death, he doesn't participate in it directly. He kind of does, but he doesn't go full force because he joins a group of people and they kill somebody. And it just kind of seems a little out there in the novel, like, well, where, where did this come from? I think the intention um, by Cooper with this was to show, like, George is on the fringe right now. He is dealing with a lot of bad people, but they're not, like, terrible, terrible. Like, yeah, that one guy cut up his ass and, like, they're doing drugs and stuff like that. And, you know, while well, that one guy's dangerous, he's not the fully formed um, sense of danger. And the fully formed sense of danger is these adults who actually do kill people, these adults who do harm people. And... I think he put that to contrast, like, hey, if George doesn't get out of this, you know, maybe this cycle, yeah, I just thought of that now, it's just stupid, but if he doesn't get out of this, this is what it can lead to, and this can be, have a lot more real-world consequences. Yeah, he got started, that's this figure, and that's really bad, and that's very consequential, but he's still on the periphery. But, as you kind of get through this novel, which is the sad part, he's, you can tell he he's not escaping it um he pretty much gets raped at a party actually um but it's not really treated as such and not i don't think that's cooper trying to comment like it's not that bad because george is knocked out and a guy starts fingering him and stuff like that and again i don't think it's cooper saying like oh it's not a big deal i think it's more cooper saying like george is so into this culture and in this stuff that like some of this tra traumatic stuff and inappropriate things doesn't even register with him anymore and it's kind of like the people I knew like in high school and stuff like that where it's like they're getting into these weird relationships when I saw them later they're they're in these situations that are not good for them but it almost doesn't register like it's like hey you're very out there or like people I met later or like um exes I had like hey this is not appropriate <laughs> like like the the life you're living that's not normal and that's what George is at. He's just not a normal thing, but he doesn't really have a pathway to get on that because a lot of the people he's with, they're the artistic bum types, unfortunately. Um, not to say all artsy people are bums, but he, those people are definitely out there and you, you'd be lying to yourself to say you, you, they aren't. So it's, so the mo more disturbing part of this novel is not necessarily the sex act, because the sex acts on aside from one or two, aren't that crazy. Maybe it gets crazier down the line. But it's more just like, yeah, here's a teenager who's lost, and you can just tell he's going to continue to be lost. He's going to continue getting validation from bad people, and he's going to be a bad place later on in life. Um, now again, like the, the Archie part that I don't like, you, you think reading about Archie people like in Savage Detectives, which I loved, and they were a bunch of bums, but I still loved it. It was more like, these kids are pretty pretentious in a lot of ways. <laughs> and I don't know if that's Cooper doing that intentionally or putting a gravity to something where I'm just, again, not connecting to as well. But, you know, these novels are really short. They're like 120 pages. And even though it wasn't my favorite, I do think I will finish the George Miles cycle and maybe read some other stuff out of it. Um, I have Frisk already, which is like um, the second or third book in it as well. and. You can just tell also, another reason I really want to buy these, these book covers are friggin' cool, man. Like, I haven't seen a book cover like this in a while, where just like, I'm just, I'm just oozing on it. Like, dude, I just want to collect these for the covers. So I kind of screwed up this copy a bit, but I'm gonna collect it just based off the covers. I know that's stupid, but the art is amazing on it. So yeah, if there's any of the Dennis Coopers you think I should check out, let me know. I'm gonna, again, read this. I'm probably gonna, I don't think it's part of the cycle, but I'm going to read God Hand. I guess that's controversial, but um, Big Hole, the guy who, um, HNW on Instagram, who recommended this to me, um, was reading that again. He's like, no, this is not um, looked upon as one of his best, but he did enjoy it. So I will look at that. If you suggest any other ones to me, let me know. But yeah, that's um, Closure by Dennis Cooper. Um, oh, really quickly. I think this was written in the 60s. What surprised me about that is that 
it, it is ahead of its time. It reads like a 2000 novel. If you like Chuck Palahniuk, and I know he's not the best writer, but this almost feels like a more grounded version of what Chuck Palahniuk wanted to be with his transgressive nature. Like, I don't know, like, it, like transgressive that people's focusing on. It, it just really feels like this is, yeah, like I said earlier, this is what Chuck Palahniuk was trying to be. But this is the better version of it. So, closure, Dave, closure by Cooper, check it out. Thank you.